So we're we're doing virtual work. I don't think we I think we finished what we had, didn't we? Yeah, we we had that little uh, that little triangular bracket thing we were giving a little push to. I think we finished that one. So uh, a little warm up one there. Yeah, I got the. We did finish it. We didn't finish it. I think you just left it for us to. Yeah, well, everything's done now. You just have to to solve it out for, for BX. Uh, actually, comes out to be fairly simple, so if it wasn't, you made some egregious error, and you better redo it. All right, so here we have some kind of lifting mechanism made of a. structure like that and there's a, a motor or something that applies a moment over here and allows us to lift some load uh, lift some load there so we'll just call that Q its weight is Q and the length of each of these side legs is L Pretty much the picture, other than starts at some angle alpha. And we want to find M the size of the moment, assuming Q and L are known, Q, L, and alpha are known, find M for uh, equilibrium. Because you need M not only to lift it, of course, but you also need M of some kind to hold it there. So there's there's your warm up question du jour. Oh, more French! Is Q a box on top of that? Is that it's What's a that? box of cues. Box of cues. That weighs Q. Q. Yeah. Pretty amazing. <laughs> From the Q company. <laughs> you can order them at Q.com. <laughs> The Q bar. The Q bar. The Q bar. He's trying to choke out. Well, there's. You laughed harder once I was beating that poor joke to death. <laughs> you politely chuckled, and then it just started getting better and better and better. And then you started contributing. I'm glad I asked that question. To, Took, uh, took Smith there to even tell us there was a place called the Q Barn to go shopping. <laughs> what do these things? Maybe. I know what. It's what we're going to get for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so while you're working, I'll decorate. How is this cold weather? <laughs> <laughs> no present for you, Scrooge. <laughs> Plus, it depends on the size, anyway. Q.com would never sell coal. You what? I have a lot of Yeah? Not looking forward to Christmas, Chris? <laughs> so we're looking for M. Do a little virtual displace. Well, of course, do your free body diagram, but then do a little virtual displacement if you can. And you can't always on the structures, but if you can, such that only M is displaced. And none of the other unknowns are. Otherwise, they're in the equation and it just makes things harder. We can do it. Just uh, you can't do it with one displacement then. So this works really well on structures where you just don't need everything. You just need one thing. Think I'm out of it? Mm -hmm. 
in my name. You'll get a good seat. Don't worry about the cue that way. Even going on the problem. Okay, give it a little displacement. If you want, you can simplify the um, structure, if uh, that helps you. But of course, put in the forces. We'll soon remember Q is known. Body diagram, and then some displacement only involving the one unknown, if possible. And you might do a different displacement than somebody else does, but you should get the same answer.
And if you did your virtual displacement the other way, it doesn't matter. Still should get the same thing in the end. That makes sense now, Bill? Do you see it? I mean, so you're actually moving it like this way? Toward, towards you? Yeah. No, no, it's a two dimensional problem. It stays in the paper. I just don't. So you're, you're, it's as if you came over and, oh, and shoved on that sideways a little bit. Well, it won't go just sideways, it's going to rotate up a little bit. Okay. So that's what you're for imagining. That's our virtual displacement. It's. Well, it, remember it was a lifting mechanism. It's as if it goes through its lifting move a little bit. So once you've got the displacement, yeah, you set up the work equation. Once of you have got to there. And list the work done by any of the forces. For the displacement I've shown, maybe you went the other way, doesn't matter. <coughs> For the displacement I've shown, how much work's done by the moment? Del alpha? Is it del alpha? No, the, the work done by the moment. It's M, because it depends on how big M is. M del alpha. M del alpha. Is it positive? Negative. I guess it doesn't matter. For my picture, it's positive. Maybe you went the other way and it would be negative. That's not a big deal because it's it's uh, it's just a negative sign that would divide out either way. Then what else? What is Q? Okay, Q is at some height. Maybe we call YQ and then goes through a displacement we might call del YQ. And so its contribution, those are in opposite directions. It'll be minus, minus Q del YQ. And again, if you rotate it the other way, you have a minus in front of the M and a plus in front of that, but when it equals zero, that doesn't matter. And we set the virtual work term equal to zero. That's why the minus sign won't matter. But what do we have to do next? Yeah, we, we have two displacement variables and we want to have it just one because then it will divide out since the whole thing equals zero. So we need del y in terms of del alpha. <coughs> Not easy to see. It's not real clear what it's going to be, so um, what do we do? Yeah, push our Fu Manchu mustache sideways, see if that helped. Did it help? No. No. <laughs> Good. I'm glad it didn't help because you're the only one that has one. <laughs> Chris is thinking, how fast can I grow? <laughs> not fast enough. So it's a good thing it didn't help. The owner's not even paying attention. Would it be L sine of alpha equals YQ, and then you have to do. Um, yeah, remember, if you can get the the work equation in terms of a single variable easily, by all means do so, but you can't always. It's, it's pretty easy to get this, but then the next step of getting rid of this displacement, since they don't, they're not the same displacement, is a little bit different. So remember what, what I said is the next step to do when we have two displacements like that? 
Fiona, you were right on top of it. I, well, I said for the first part, you do L sine of alpha equals y cubed. Yeah, we, we define it, for, we relate uh, not the changes in the variables, but relate the, the positions first, and then differentiate, and that will give us the relation in the changes. So it's uh, y cubed equals L, L sine alpha because that's that right triangle and we're looking for YQ so it's L sine alpha and then that you can derivate to find out the relationship between any m small change in the y direction related to the changes in the alpha uh, in the angle alpha and that derivative is uh, almost l cosine alpha Del alpha. Yeah. We have to have that. That was the whole reason for doing this, because now those two things are related. And it doesn't matter which you put in for the other, might as well just do it the easy way and swap out the del y q since we already have the equation for that. Don't have to solve for anything. And now our work function become m del alpha minus q l cosine alpha del alpha equals zero. And so the del alpha divides out and what's left must equal zero. <coughs> and so we can then solve for m. Which, once you get it, hopefully becomes a bit easier. So the, the size of M is going to depend upon the size of alpha at any one time. So it's, a, it's not going to be a, a constant. That one is too hard, that one is too hard, that one is too hard. Now we got one more thing to, to do with this, one more thing to cover. Okay? Good warm up. Alright. Last new topic for the whole year. It's related to this, but this will be it for introducing these mind bogglingly interesting concept we've been working on for the whole semester. Yeah? Oh. Got there. Okay. Alright, couple things. What, what we're going to do, we're going to use this, these, these, well, sort of these same ideas to determine uh, stability. We've been working with equilibrium the whole term but we can have situations where we have equilibrium and we might not necessarily really have stability. For example, and we'll do this problem in a second. For example, we've got something, I don't know, maybe it's a, a garage door type thing. There's a little spring there. And that's hooked bring a little bit closer to the wall. That means I have to re-drill, but that's okay. All right. So there's, what? Do I need to get a piece of chalk? 
Don't don't bother me, please. So there's a little roller there. Spring is attached to the middle of the roller. Then there's a an arm like that. And there's another roller at the bottom there. So we've got we've got that basic setup and uh, set like that, that object is is in equilibrium. There's no reason it shouldn't just sit there. Certainly in terms of, of our um, uh, the, the ideas we've been working on in this class. However, the slightest little nudge is going to cause that gizmo to go to some other spot and it might bounce back and forth for a little while, but sooner or later, it's going to come to another equilibrium position. Somewhere like that. And then a little nudge there, and all it's going to do is bounce around a little bit and then finally come to a rest at that spot again. So both of these are equilibrium positions, but clearly there's one, this one's not a stable equilibrium because a little nudge and you'll knock it out of that position. This one is a stable equilibrium, a little nudge will just cause it to bounce around this position and it'll finally come to a rest there again. So we have this idea then uh, that we need to find out how can we tell the difference between something that's in a stable equilibrium and something that's in an unstable equilibrium. And to do that, we're going to look at the potential energy of the system. which for us is fairly easy to do. Our book uses a V for potential energy. I think it's obvious where that comes from, as it always is with these letters that you use. So we won't discuss it. Uh, we have two types here. We have gravitational potential energy and we have elastic potential energy. What the rollers do, of course, for us is to uh, take friction out of, the, out of this problem. Not that friction has potential energy, but if you remember, uh, we do have work energy relations that we've used before. <coughs> remember how to find the, the uh, gravitational potential energy? Mg. Yeah, MGH. And in fact, if there's several parts to the system, you could sum that up for each one of the pieces. H measured from where? Anywhere, anywhere we want. Because what we're going to be interested in is not the potential energy itself, but the change in potential energy. Because the equilibrium, uh, the, the, the equilibrium places, uh, we'll, well, we'll get to it in a second, uh, are determined on the change of that potential energy. Remember what the elastic potential energy is? energy of the spring, so it involves K. <laughs> what? The change in delta. 
one half k Man, your physics one <laughs> He really sucks. Del squared. Where this time, uh, well, that's what I use in class. Maybe we want to use something else since we're using that. That's what I used uh, last year. We'll uh, we'll use maybe we'll use a D. Let's see if that works. Uh, where that D is. Remember how that's defined. Is what? Yeah, it's the change in length of the spring. The difference of the spring from rest length. Uh, I believe the book has an X in there, which I don't like to do because X usually is the position of the object itself and not necessarily the deflection of the spring, and they can be quite different. What we need to look at is dV, d d h I guess uh, actually it'd be d v d d y for our case well how does that <coughs> oh yeah we're 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 making it simple we'll just look at the uh, at the the incremental change in we don't necessarily have to do it with respect to something um, because it can go in all kinds of different directions. So that'll, that'll do for us. Or in terms of, of some particular displacement. Um, and when that's zero, we have equilibrium. We, sh we should put in some kind of displacement. Maybe it'll be in the x direction, maybe it'll be in y, maybe it'll be in the theta direction, whatever, whatever we need to do. Uh, in fact, all of those have to be satisfied at any one time. Uh, if the derivative, if the, if the potential energy is either at a minimum or maximum, we have equilibrium doesn't mean we have stability because we have a picture here with two situations of equilibrium but one stable and one isn't. So stability is determined by the shape of the curve from there in the second derivative. And we can look at it if we have a potential energy curve that has a minimum then we have a stable equilibrium. And you can remember because this looks just like the kind of thing that if you put something in that could move around like a ball, it would stop there and be not only in equilibrium, but in a stable equilibrium. If we nudge that ball a little bit, all it's going to do is roll back and forth a little bit and come to a stop there, right in the same pile. That's stable equilibrium. What's the, sh the value of the second derivative for that kind of curve? Negative? Everybody agrees? Only one person speaking up. I just want to make sure. It's not that it's democracy. It's not that it's If it's greater than zero, we decided it'll look like that. And that's a stable equilibrium. If we have an equilibrium function that looks like that, and we have a maximum. We 
can we can get a little ball to balance there in equilibrium, but the slightest little nudge is going to knock it from that position, and that's the very same kind of idea we had here. If we knock it from this position, just nudge it a little bit to the side, it's going to fall and go to a different position. And so that's an unstable equilibrium. That would be a negative second derivative. Will tell us whether our equilibrium position is stable or unstable. I guess the other possibility is that we have an equilibrium function that is a constant. And then the second derivative is zero itself. So in between these two, then we have, we have, uh, that's it for That's We're not going to play there. That's no fun at all. Okay, Fair, fairly straightforward. We need to determine what the uh, potential energy is for our system, and then we can calculate the first derivative to find out where there's equilibrium, calculate the second to see whether it's a stable or unstable equilibrium. So we'll, we'll do it on that one there. I'll go ahead and leave it for a second to make sure you got all the stuff written down while I give you the, the details here. So a spring with a spring constant of 200 newtons per meter. Makes sense that that's got to be part of it because that's, gonna want, that's all that's going to be holding up that end. Um, unstretched in this original position. So our d equals zero. What I think the book called x. Uh, and then the, the uh, system itself is 0.6 meters long. <coughs> and has a mass of 10 kilograms. the whole system. And don't worry that much about the size of the wheels or weight of wheels or anything. <coughs> Wouldn't be a big deal if those had some weight to just put that in. So, But the whole system is 10 kilograms. Okay. One more thing left to do before we can start and just put things in here and deliberate it. We need some place to say h equals zero. And then we measure everything from there. So it's pretty simple. If we make this right there h equals zero. Just because that's uh, uh, then the change in h will be exactly equal to the change in the length of the of the uh, of the spring itself. All right, so <clears throat> we need to look at it at some displaced position and then find out where in that spectrum of things the, uh, the equilibrium position itself is. All right, so let's see. That distance is L. Uh, the center of mass of the system right in the middle of the bar we'll assume and so we can call that distance uh, well that'll be H then. Uh, if that's H equals zero then any change in that we'll call <coughs> H. That, fair enough then, then uh, the gravitational potential energy is just the uh, position of the center of the gravity from that point. Um, uh, it's also true. 
true that this will be D. And then we'll be at some angle theta in the end. We've got to bring that into it too. So it doesn't matter which we use, but let's agree to use that one as theta. Because if we, uh, we're, we're going to have to relate all these, remember, to a single variable so that we can then uh, take the derivative with respect to that variable. Okay, I think we got all the, all the pieces. So, so let's see. Uh, MG, let's. Uh, uh, we can do whatever we want, but let's relate everything to theta. We have to relate it to one of the variables. L is not a variable, uh, but H and D are, and theta is. But we'll relate them all to theta. So H, let's see, H equals, um, this whole distance is L, and It'd be L minus this distance. Is that right? L minus this distance. And that distance is we use that? That's kind of a pain. Yeah, we want to use that one. And they're all going to be a pain. Oh, no, no. We, we can do uh, L over 2. L cosine theta over 2. That'll work for us. That'll give us, a, uh, that'll give us this part that we can subtract off. So that's L over 2 cosine theta. That distance is the same as that distance, and that's L over 2 cosine theta. That'll work. Even if you don't see it. Think about it in a second. Let's see. Since that point is right in the middle, then this distance is the same as this distance, and that distance is L over 2 cosine theta. So that's H, L minus L over 2 cosine theta. So you guys are getting all excited because once we have this all in terms of theta, you get to derivate it while I go get lunch. Come back in three hours and see if you're done. I'm setting it up for you. One half K, those are constants. Uh, then D is L minus L cosine theta. How's that fit? Comfortable with that one? The whole height was L. We only want D, that's the stretch of the spring. And so D is L minus this amount, which is L cosine theta. And it's squared. Now it's all in terms of a thing, single variable and so we can find dv d theta. Not we, you. I don't have to find it. I got it right here. I'll give you a couple of minutes with it. We're not going anywhere. Thank <clears throat> you.
MDL or do something. Okay. That's a shame. All right. I was, okay. I was just, uh, it was either that or give you coal. So I just did that. And then the other part, KL squared. One minus cosine. That's the part that I wrote down for the first one. One minus cosine theta sine theta. Does that sound right? Delta KL squared. One minus cosine theta sine theta. Okay. Then what? No, we already took the derivative. We have to do something with that. Let's see. We don't need this now. We don't need these pretty pictures. What do we do now? Set it equal to zero since we're looking for the equilibrium points, minimum or maximum. We don't know which. Set them equal to zero. DB theta equal to zero. That happens at, uh, well, if sine theta was zero, that would, that would be, uh, the whole thing would be equal to zero, right? And if sine theta is zero, then theta is. <laughs> Rex world. <laughs> if sine theta is equal to zero, then theta equals zero. And that's the first one we had anyway. So we knew that, uh, just our common sense told us that was going to be, in fact, we can already anticipate that's going to be uh, unstable equilibrium. In fact, you can check that uh, in the second derivative. Um, the other place. I'll tell you what's valuable. Class time. I don't. I don't ever waste your class time. Um, or or the rest of the stuff is zero because we can divide through by the sine <coughs> theta, and then we can say. MGL over 2 equals KL squared 1 minus cosine theta. That's the other thing that must be is possible for the uh, potential uh, derivative of the potential energy to be 0. That's dividing through by theta, and then um, obviously those other two then would have to be equal to each other. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'll do the easy part. L cancels. Can't do too much more. We can just solve for the cosine of theta. Cosine of theta equals mg over 2kl. Minus 1, but the whole thing then minus, because the minus that would be on the cosine. Does that sound okay? And we have those numbers now, so we can put them in and figure out what the angle is. Let's see. M of the system was 10 kilograms. G, 9.8 meters per second. I didn't say so, but let's assume we're doing this on Earth. I know. No, uh, King uh, Rex will. Hey, that's redundant. 
to... <laughs> what? It's not? It is. Look it up. You know it all, kids. Uh, what are the units going to be on that? What do we want them to be? We, we don't want any units because it's cosine. So kilogram meters per second squared is a newton. So that cancels. And then meters on the bottom, meters, that cancels. So we're OK. Units cancel. So we get then that theta equals the inverse cosine of, I don't know if I have that number, actual value. What's that come out to be? Minus 10, minus... It'd be plus 1, right? Oh, yeah, it'd be plus 1, because that, that would carry through. Yeah. Does that come out to be? 100 over 2, divided by 2, divided by 4, like 0.24, so about uh, 0.4 something. So the whole thing's about 0.6. Because uh, that's a minus and there's a plus one. Is that about right? I'm doing better in my head than you guys are with the calculus. I mean, most of the time, are your word for it. Oh no, what? that whole thing, okay, 0.59. Oh dang, I'm sorry. I did my head got 0.6. I apologize. Uh, so theta equals who? 53.75. 53, we'll call it 53.8 degrees. So, somewhere in there. Now, um, need to check is that stable equilibrium. We suspect it is, but it's easy enough to check because you can do the second derivative and if you plug that into the second derivative that you get from here, uh, you get a positive number. And so you know that it's a, a stable equilibrium. But we don't need to check that because that's just taking derivatives. Or, or we're okay with that. That will be greater than zero at 53.8 degrees. Once you have that, you could have double checked the theta equals zero and you find out it was negative, telling us that that's an unstable equilibrium there. Thank goodness the time goes when we're having fun. I don't even have time to give you a problem for the weekend. Good, you get the whole weekend off. All right. <laughs>